Welcome to the Revolution Church Podcast. Good morning, everyone. cold one. Look who's here. Lucky Jackson. Just me and you, buddy. Cheers. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, It's another beautiful day in in Washington, Linwood, Washington. I always say Seattle because it seems bigger, but I actually live in Linwood. A little bit outside of Washington. A little bit out of Seattle. In Washington, a little out of Seattle. Um, good, to see, good, good to see you guys this morning. Um, good to be here. Uh, so, kids had school off this past week, or daycare off this week, so I was back to to full-time dadding, and uh, very, 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 very tired. Um, but that's also because the kids had colds, so they got the week off, and they were sick. And um, guess what dad got? You're right, dad got the cold too. So, But luckily, it's a kid's cold, so it's just like, eesh, it's just enough to feel tired and groggy and a little bit no- more than normal. <laughs> Um, woke up with a really bad sore throat this morning, but, uh, yeah, so those are the, those are the, uh, those are the hard parts of having children is every time they get sick, you get sick and they're germ factories. So we should get rid of all children so we can stay safe. Um, yeah, so here we are folks, the dream we all dream of. Facebook Live. Have you guys checked out our YouTube video yet? Our YouTube channel, not video, but our YouTube channel yet? Um, uh, Our friend Danny did a new intro for us, new intro outro video for us. That's very cool that we had made. I really dig it. So check out uh, Revolution Broadcasting slash YouTube.com. And uh, we're there. We got to get those views up because I've got like all the. I went to YouTube to find it the other day, and it's all like stuff for me from like the '90s, late 2000s. But um, so yeah, subscribe too. So it, the more subscribers we have, the more we can go live, 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 live. Um, for some reason, they we have to do like a workaround to be live on there, and I also have to figure out the the Mevo which we do have. I'm just working out a few kinks. Um, anyhow, so here we are. Um, oh, so next week we're going to have a, 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 a new, we're going to have a special guest next week. Um, I don't know if they're, they've joined us this morning or not, but we're going to have a very, very, very special guest next week. I know that some of you are wondering, like, Jay, don't you have anybody that you've really taught all your wisdom and knowledge to? that you could unleash to the world so you would not be the only voice crying in the wilderness? Yes, yes, there is one. (laughs) One guy I've taught a lot and I think he's ready to be unleashed. Just take him off the leash and let him run. Um, They're pretty good. One, One of, I wouldn't say my best students, but a good student, so. So next week, I'll be unleashing this new talent onto the world. Um, and, uh, yeah, he talks a little funny, but you'll get used to it. <laughs> so, yes, next week, we will be unleashing Peter Rollins, um, one of my top 10, if not 15, students. <laughs> <laughs> well, he will be here amongst you all. I'll probably, cha- I'll probably take all this stuff down so the set will look a little bit different. 
but next week we'll have Peter Rollins. And um, so welcome him to the, to the uh, he's also a first time, first time listener, first time watcher here. Thank you for accompanying us with your, your royalty. It's so nice. Probably first time he's been to church in a while, folks. Um, but we you know we'll all be in deep prayer for next week for his, uh, for his speaking. But the reason, one of the reasons we're having Pete, because um, uh, usually we can't afford to have him on anything like this. Yes, Peter Rollins. Peter Rollins is, is, is going to be our guest next week. Um, the other Rollins, as I like to call him. Um, well, Pete has got a fun little event that he does every year um, that was canceled last year because COVID. Um, so Pete is, 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 is going to be doing Wake online. So you guys will be able to enjoy Wake online. Now, I'm going to be serious for a minute here that Wake is an amazing event. It's going to be uh, May 21st through the 23rd. Um, I've taught Pete how to use the computer a little bit, so he might be able to pop up a link here. Um, but Wake is a great event full of speakers and musicians and different folks. Um, I think this year it's going to be very Belfast heavy from Northern Belfast, which is one of my home away from homes. Um, speakers, thinkers, musicians, artists, it's really amazing. Now, I went, I've gone a, quite a few years, and uh, one year it was really good, uh, which was different. Um, no, last, two years ago I went, and I was going through a really rough time, and, uh, and I went to Wake, and Pete put me on the fringe stage, as he usually does, because he, he, he doesn't want have, to have to compete with the, with the master uh, during the main event. So... Um, no, but I went last year, and it was really amazing. It was, it was life-giving, and I learned a lot. Um, even new stuff about grace, you know? Um, and I'm the grace guy, and uh, got a lot of great stuff from it. And uh, also being in Belfast, which, unfortunately, this year, people won't be able to be there in person, uh, is a brilliant, brilliant thing as well. But just... The teaching that I got was really solid. The conversations we had were really solid. Um, there'll be nine hours um, of, of all sorts of entertainment and stuff, but um, it's really good stuff. It's really good stuff. And what I want to say was is, <clears throat> is sometimes when someone's like your close friend, your best mate, you don't get a lot out of it, um, but I got a lot out of it. And it was life-saving. It was life-giving. And it, I came back, I feel like, a better person. And uh, I also got to see Todd McGowan, which was just amazing. He's one of my favorite writers and, uh, now. But I, I discovered him at Wake. Um, and it was great. So I think this year is going to be great. I hope you guys will sign up for Wake. Um, the only thing that can make it better is if this week the U.K., makes the uh, the quarantine shorter because if the quarantine goes down to three days yours truly will be in Northern Ireland uh, hopefully interviewing Pete but uh, and will also be part of Wake but that depends on the UK so if anybody has any powerful friends and you can make a few phone calls to get me out to Belfast for this event I would be really happy um, me and Pete are also working on a documentary um, but We'll talk more about that later, but we'll probably try to get some of that work done as well. So check it out. So next week, guys, tell your friends, tell your family. Um, Pete Rollins will be here next week. Um, he's posting something really big and huge that's obnoxious right now on our screens. I just saw it, so check it out, and uh, hopefully I'll be there as well. Um, you know, help Pete double the sales. Now, if I'm not there, don't get a refund. I'll be there in spirit. We really want to help this, this, this newcomer out, Mr. Peter Rollins. So next week, Pete Rollins, Unleashed, Revolution Gathering. Um, I love making the transition here because that's my favorite part. But as you notice, behind me, you can leave now, Pete. Please leave now because I can't 
handle any more mockery. Um, <laughs> Caleb's missing. Where is Caleb? We have no guest, guest host today. Um, well, I, 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 I replaced... I replaced Caleb as our guest host because he is sick today, and I'm sick, and we both talked, and we both decided if we're both sick with different sicknesses, not COVID, as far as either one of us are concerned so far, um, we didn't want to just combine our sicknesses together and become one gross sickness. So he's at home today. I'm sure he's watching online. Um, but so Felix the Cat, which is basically the punk rock version of Garfield, is here today. And then... Uh, the Roof Rex album is right next to it. So that's my, this is my punk cred. And uh, did I say Felix? Because it's not Felix the Cat. It is a, it's a, uh, what is his name? You guys know. Anyway, my kid's cat in my punk rock. This is all together right there. So Gar, uh, that's not Garfield either. Anyway, bye Pete. Good seeing you. Um, enjoy your day off. I know you work really hard <laughs> so, <laughs> to stay together. So Roof Rex is a punk rock album. And uh, it's not Elmo. You guys know who that is. First person to guess, I'll send a sticker to. Heatcliff. Oh, Greg got it. Greg, send me, DM me your address. Heatcliff. It's Heatcliff, the punk rock Garfield. So, and my punk rock cred right next to it. So you guys are going like, who is that band? Well, Search them out and find them. They're a Belfast punk rock band that I love. And so I figured that was the only two. It always takes more than one to replace Caleb. I think we only have one person on here who, 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 who doesn't like Caleb sitting in the background. Um, so I wanted to have something to distract them this today too as well. So there you go. Um, so today we're going to talk about, what do we always talk about? We always talk about grace, and lately I've been on the whole, like, let's not scapegoat each other, kick, and all that stuff. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about, um, hmm, blanket statements. Blanket statements, that's what we're going to talk about. And um, blanket statements and how all blanket statements are bad. You see what I did there? I said all blanket statements are bad. Um, Heatcliff, Heatcliff, no one should terrorize the neighborhood. That's his theme song. And that's actually, my son started watching Heatcliff cartoons and loved him, and it was hard to find a Heatcliff stuffed animal. I'm just gonna go side note. And so I had to order one on eBay and I actually had the same Heatcliff stuffed animal when I was a little kid. So, yeah, Heatcliff steals fish and stuff. He's a bad, he's a bad dude. Um, no, but I wanted to talk about blanket statements and how um, all blanket statements are bad. No, how most blanket statements are bad. So I'm, I'm making it, I'm being very correct, choosing my words wisely. Um, and how I... I how we, we seem to shoot ourselves in the foot quite a bit with these blanket statements, and I don't even think we realize it. And we often really like blanket statements that support our own belief system or our politics or our opinions are, are usually ones that we really dig. But I think we got to be careful of blanket statements. And I think about this because, obviously, because of... Uh, social media really have you guys seen that netflix documentary about social media um i can't remember the name of it i'm sure someone will, will will say what it's called here in a second that's what i love about facebook is that we can just the listeners just fill in and then i can read it and then i can tell everybody who's listening to the podcast so there you go see we do this together we're a community um but this idea of blanket statements these these these, these these ways we have to say all of them, they're all like this. They all think that way. All blank are bad. All blank are good. 
all, you know, all these just like these, these things that we use. And I, I also learned this in therapy is that this is not a way for us to, to, uh, not really great way to communicate. I learned it in therapy because I realized that I did it a lot, uh, in my marriage before my, with my ex-wife or, or, or they might've done it with, she might've done it with me that, you know, we, we ha had to work through that in our, our relationship. I had to learn that with a lot of people is that blanket statements really aren't, aren't great. And so, um, let's look at those for a second. Let's look at some blanket statements, if you will. Um, so, so yesterday I was, I was uh, reading this article in Rolling Stone magazine uh, from Glenn Danzig and Glenn was like, punk rock could have never been made in this, this culture because of woke culture and blah, 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 which was kind of a blanket statement of his own. And, uh, he was talking about some of the music he wrote, which some of it really probably wouldn't exist <laughs> or at least would be on people's radars more. Um, it's funny, like if you watch movies and things like that, even in the 80s and stuff and in the 90s, you know, like not really kind of crazy. Um, like the toy. Have you ever watched the toy? Yikes. I know. Um, but Glenn Danzig said this thing about wokeness and blah, blah, blah. And what I thought was really funny was is that a lot of people who disagreed with what Glenn said started to say like, oh, thanks a lot, old man. Thanks a lot, boomer, you know, and things like that. And I thought, it's really funny that he comes out and he critiques a group of people who don't like to use blanket statements or do not like to uh, be, uh, don't like isms very much. And then they go with ageism as their critique of saying, thanks a lot, old man. And I just think that that's, the irony that we don't always catch ourselves in. Now, I know that me, it's ironic for me saying like, oh, you shouldn't do this, blah, blah, blah. I get the, all the irony that's happening. It's, we're just full of it. That's just life in general. Um, lots of contradictions, as we've talked about before and as Hegel has talked about before. Um, we're all full of them. And we all have them. And the thing is, is can we learn to embrace them and even confront them and learn to live life better? And that's what I hope to do is by confronting them and looking at them and seeing which ones can we live with and which ones can we change and just kind of live life better in, in community. Um, but I just thought it, it, it's just funny to me that it's like, when is it okay to insult somebody and when it's not okay to insult somebody, how we kind of pick and choose how we do these things. And that's a lot of why a lot of us have left religion. There's a lot of us why this is your only church for the week and we don't even call it really church anymore you know what i mean like the only place you attend during the week is, is revolution because you're going like ah, i've really had it with religion i've really had it with christianity i really you know it's really been tough um and a lot of us left because we saw all these like hypocrisies um but sometimes it's harder for us because we spring another way for us to see our the hypocrisies that are in our own lives and i would even venture out to say that if we talk to people who grew up outside of religion outside of christianity and, and grew up in different ways that they would all have stories that they could tell us too, where they were hurt and they felt abused or they felt neglected or they felt uh, crushed with impossible standards in their own lives. And I think that comes along with living within the human world, just living within life. That's just living life on life's terms, that that's part of it. Um, so I, I guess one of the things why I, I, I don't like blanket statements a lot lately is they've been kind of doing my head in because I've, uh, especially on Twitter, I think, especially there, um, is it's like Christians versus Christians. You know what I mean? Like, as I, I, I follow a lot of people, and I'm, I'm thinking about unfollowing everybody just so I don't see all the stuff anymore. But then I feel like, am I really participating in Twitter if I do that? Um, and I don't want to just pick and choose because I don't want anybody to feel bad. You know what I mean? Anyhow. Um, but this idea is that, like, each side has to be right. Like we don't make room for nuances. We don't make rooms for each other's mistakes. We don't, you know, and then when we do make the mistakes, we don't want to admit we make the mistakes. There's so much growth that needs to happen in that community alone, in that religion alone, uh, much less in, in the human world. Uh, so I was thinking about this, this, um, the fact that absolutes don't help us. Absolutes don't really get us anywhere fast. And um, 
And how can we choose our words wisely? How can we choose our words and think before we speak to one another? Um, especially if you're an educator or a speaker like myself, you know, you know, how we're communicating with each other is important to me. And one of the things I was thinking of was, is like the algorithms in, uh, in social media, you know, are, are really made so that we are shown what we like and what we agree with and what we think it will be affirmed. What we want to buy will be posted. You know what I mean? Like I get a lot of punk rock stuff, you know, that comes up or a lot of like, hey, get a new head of hair um, stuff you know, popping up, which is really amazing. Or you'll have a conversation. Have you ever had a conversation in the car and then got home and turned on your, your phone and all of a sudden what you're talking about is advertised? I remember me and Caleb were talking about like really sick skateboard stuff, you know? And then I turned on my phone and it was like, you may like this really cool skateboard trick posted on Thrasher. I'm like, oh, that is so bizarre. So everyone, the phones are listening. We know that. But this, this idea that the algorithm is, is, is forcing us even further apart. Like, I think if you, do, if you look, I think it's been since 2007, 2008, when we all really started diving into social media full force, is this split between the left and the right has just gotten wider and wider and wider and wider. But it's also because a lot of us have been like, the media and the algorithms and all these things that we're being force fed has just done nothing but work us to keep us separated even more. And it's caused people to have lower self-esteem. It's caused people to hurt more. It's caused people to, to worry about how they appear and what their life looks like and what their life is and different things like this. And it's not something that's created a really healthy space for us. It's actually divided us more and, and continues. And so that's why I think words, the choice in how we choose words are important. Like the other day I saw a guy, uh, minister, colleague, person, you know, he, he said, uh, he, his post started with, if Republicans all had their way, we'd all be dot, 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 dot. I'm not going to get into it. But the point was, it was so general. It was so, it was such a blanket statement of saying, if they all had their way, we would all be doing this, this, and this. And so I, I, I didn't want to even say anything. Do you know why I didn't want to say anything? Is because I knew that I thought, I thought that if I said anything, I would be attacked. Attacked by mostly people I agree with in a lot of political ways. So I, so I held back and I didn't say anything for days. And so when I finally said anything, I just got lost in the comments and nobody said anything, which was actually like, because every time I would turn on on, I'd be looking like, is it going to come up? Is somebody going to say anything? Is the fight's going to start? Um, but but my quote, my comment was just like, if you just said most or some, if you just clarified that, I, I would be able to respect this this a little this comment a little bit more. But this idea of just scapegoating whole groups of people and saying this is what they all want and this is what they all think, and, you know, if I wrote, if someone wrote, if woke people controlled the media, we would all be blank, blank, blank. But it's just not true because we're all individuals. We're all different. We all have different ways of thinking. We all have different convictions. We all are, are, have, have different contradictions in our own lives. Um, we are all unique. I know that people are like, oh, hey, snowflake. But in a way, some of us are all different and interesting and snowflakes. You know what I mean? And so the idea is, is like when we, when we want to sum everybody up, we just continue to build division amongst one another. Now, for me, the tough part is that I've decided to subscribe my way of living to this religion that was originally called the way, or actually Judaism, and then the way, and then eventually Christianity. And I want to live this out on a, in, a, in a way that is productive, but that helps others because I, I really do believe this whole idea of loving your enemy and this whole idea of loving others does make the world a better place. You know, I do believe, you know, that's why I love Dr. King so much because Dr. King always challenges me to just love others even when it's uncomfortable, you know I mean? Even when it's like, oh, you know, um, 
Bernice, Bernice King on, on, on Twitter is on Twitter and I love her. And sometimes she's actually liked things I've said. And I've, I've often said like, man, your dad is the one person. And now you that are like, kind of like encouraging me to stay and keep doing what I'm doing. Cause I just want to shut it all down and just run. You know, my dad used to always be like, he's like, I'm just going to shut the whole thing down and move to a, move to a cabin in the woods. You know, that was his big threat all the time. And he's 80 years old, still doing the same thing. So I guess it's empty threats. Um, he should move to a cabin in the woods and he probably relax a little bit better at this point. At 80, I hope I'm living in a cabin in, in Belfast, where our next week's speaker is from. Um, sorry, my notes are all over the place this week. So that's why I'm kind of like not giving you direct things because I'm kind of, I've been sick. So I just was like, didn't make my notes as clear as I usually do, which is not very clear at all anyway. Um, but let's get into this a little bit further. So the algorithms are doing their part in dividing us. And it's one funny thing is I think the one thing that does unite a lot of us is our use of social media, but it's the one thing that continues to uh, work in a way that is divisive and adds to the divisiveness. So that's why I think we need to be extra vigilant to work outside of, of uh, this divisive world, why we should maybe choose our words wisely. Um, like the character limitations on Twitter sometimes are, are probably the worst part because then you end up leaving out the some or most or, you know, rather than and you just poof, scapegoat everybody. Um, but we're in a time where scapegoating is, is, is very dangerous to us all. Um, and it's pushing this, this idea of binary thinking on us really tough. It's really projecting onto us the us and them mentality, you know, and then we start to have these checklists of how we have to fit in and what we have to do and, and where we have to be and creates these almost impossible standards as religion has in the past for us to live up to and kind of crushes us with these po impossible demands because all of a sudden, you know, your conservative friends aren't conservative enough and your woke friends aren't woke enough or your liberal friends aren't liberal enough, you know, and then we start to divide and split and split off into these different divisions. And we have such a high standard that we say these people aren't in, we don't like these people, these, you know, we're not part of them, you know. And, and it's amazing how you know, I feel like Christianity in the 80s and 90s was like, you know, if you, if, you know, abortion and being LGBTQ, those were like, nobody was, you know, those were the, those were the, the us and them lines, you know what I mean? And now it's almost like politics have taken that place. Like if you're a progressive Christian or you're, you know, then, then Republicans, that's the line. If you're a conservative Christian, then Democrats, that's the line. You know what I mean? And then forget about it. If you're, you know, a leftist, then you're even in another place, you know, another, another box that we can put each other in. And that's what it seems like we would try to do is we continue to put each other in other boxes. Now, I don't have a problem with people believing and having, sharing different convictions. That's why I love revolution is because I believe we have a diversity in this community, a diversity of thinking. And I love the fact that we have those. And so some ways I might be preaching to the choir but also the reason I'm preaching to the choir is saying, hey guys, we've got to remember to choose our words wisely. Um, as I've studied philosophy a little bit more because of Pete Rollins really is because it, it, as I've, I've learned to enjoy it more is the words are always chosen so particularly, like every word is chosen. Like we're trying to read Hegel. It's like he just chooses every word. And even sometimes he has his own means to those words. So you have to find those, but everything is very particular because it, 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 it's, the message is very important to get across. And just the slightest miss of a word here or there could change the whole thing. So, it, so it's pretty important. Um, anyway, so this is a good time to maybe talk about the scriptures, talk about Jesus for a second. Um, what was... What was Jesus trying to say to us with stories like the Good Samaritan? You know, um, he, told, he tells a story to the Good Samaritan, but he basically tells this story to a group of people who despise Samaritans. 
And so his point here is not, you guys are bad for despising Samaritans. His point is saying that, I mean, he's probably kind of saying that, but what he's really trying to say is like, even the people you despise do good things. Even the people you don't like and don't agree with have character, are human, feel suffering, uh, see suffering, have empathy, have sympathy. You know, these, these people are unique. People are complex. Uh, you can't judge groups by the skin of their color or by, their sex, by the color of their skin or by their sexuality or, you know, by their politics even. You know, we're always looking for that one thing to really sum somebody up. You know, it's like gr when I talk about grace, how people always want grace with an asterisk because, it, you know, because they want it to only cover certain things and not super things and other things. And I'm like, it's anarchy. You know, grace is anarchy. And, and, and in a way, we're always like, okay, well, all Samaritans are bad. Well, this story in this one, the Samaritan is actually the hero. Who, who did the right thing? And the guy goes, the one who helped the person. He doesn't even want to say Samaritan. And Jesus is trying to show that you can't scapegoat one another. You can't hate people despite where they're from or where they're. You can't hold them up or hold them low. Like people are human beings. That's why in Galatians... When Paul says, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female, for we are all one in Christ. And what he's trying to say is that we're all in this together. We all have the same lack. We all have the same emotions. We're all different. You know, you can't, someone, some, you can't sum up someone's character based on these things, on where they're from or who they like. And I'm going to go to say as far as even who they vote for. You know, I, I know a lot of people who voted for many different reasons and vote for reasons that, I don't, that aren't even on my radar. You know? And so, uh, Steve Peters just said, I love what Tyler Perry said on the Oscars. Refuse to hate. And I can agree with that. I just not going to, I don't want to hate anybody. And... I don't want to have a checkbox of people I hate. Now, I, I'm going to take this further in a minute, but um, but like back just to refocus a little bit on these 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 blanket statements. Like, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule. Like my one of my favorite bands is Social Distortion, but you know what? They've made a bad album. I'm not going to say which one because I'm afraid. <laughs> no, but they have not. You know, all their albums have been great. Not all their songs have been great. A lot of them have. Most of them have, but they've had off days. Um, Or, or the Beatles. I was thinking about the Beatles. You know, like, God, who doesn't love the Beatles? A lot of people, amazingly enough, don't love the Beatles. And I, I was reading John Lydon's book, and he was talking about how he rebelled from one of his biggest rebellions to, do, to be part of punk rock was the early Beatles. He's like, and then, you know, they became this other great band. But for me, it was too late because all I heard was like, yeah, 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 I want to hold your hand. And love is the secret and only love rules. And he's like, and I thought life was more complex than that. You know, um, but so, so you see what I'm saying? It's like there's this constant complexity. I'm using really simple things that probably won't make a lot of us super angry because I think it's easier for us to kind of look at and understand and then maybe step further back later. Um, but like, you know, everybody has off times. Everybody has different times. Their work progresses and changes over time. And for us to sum up, the Beatles based on their first album compared to their last album. You, you know, you can't do that. Um, to sum people up based on one point of their life is, is really missing out on the beauty of humanity. Um, it worries me. But w w one of the things I want to say, and I I'm not going to even stay very long because I feel like if I, 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 I'll just run this into the ground if I don't do it right. Um, like, I have people I like who aren't, who don't, I don't agree with politically, okay? You know, I'm going to even go further and say, I have people who I see as heroes and as mentors to my work and my life who I don't agree with politically. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not the end all. It can't be because I miss out on the beauty 
of humanity. I miss out on beautiful advice and life experience when I cut a whole group of people out based on a few things that I would decide to make non-negotiators. You know, so what I try to do is argue well, listen, and agree to disagree sometimes. And I, I know that's a tough thing and people think it's compromise or it's lukewarm or it's being in the middle, you know. Or call it what you will. I call it living life well. I call opening up my horizons to all, all people, having conversations. Also, that's how people change and that's how I change. That's how I think, that's how I grow is through these conversations. And a lot of people say, well, Jay, what about hurt? And what about pain? And what about being abused? And that's usually where we go when I have these type of conversations. And so what I want to say to you here, and, and please hear me clearly, is, you know, I understand that. I have gone through so much therapy and so much counseling and, and been on so many different medications to get to the place where I get, I understand hurt and I understand pain. And I am not asking anyone to arrive at being, you know, pure Zen and, you know, become Jesus and love everybody. I'm not asking that. Um, but what I am saying is to remember that I too have faced pain mostly by Christians. You know, I have survived through one of the biggest church scandals in the world. You know, I've had pastors and preachers and teachers and people say very unkind things to me and do very unkind things to me as well. I have lived through two divorces. I have lost my mother to cancer and then watched someone make a meme of my mom speaking with Skeletor's voice because she looked like a skeleton before she died and they thought that was really funny. Um, you know, I've, I've been through the pain. I watched a lot of my conservative friends completely stop being my friend and supporting me and talking to me because I supported my LGBTQ friends. You know, I know what this pain feels like. So when I sit here and ask you to not use blanket statements, when I sit here and ask you to love your enemies and to love those who don't always treat you well, I'm not asking this as some kind of great fantasy idea that I have. I'm asking you this and communicating this with from my own experience, my own strengths, and my own hopes. I'm coming from a place where I've lived it. Not, not just, this is not a theory. This isn't an idea. I didn't read some really great books based on this concept. I am now, because I'm realizing like, oh wow, philosophers talk about this. Hegel talked about this. You know, oh, my, oh my God, you know, people have been talking about the complexities of human, human beings forever. People have been talking about you know, the fact that we're all full of contradictions and how we, we learn to weave and survive within having, being, having different contradictions and having different convictions as well. And Jesus wasn't just coming up with this idea of, oh, love your enemies. I mean, Jesus was loving his enemies as, the, as, he, as he hung up on a cross. You know, he's actually doubting his God more, but also screaming out, if you're there, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. So, so this is a concept that I take very seriously. This is an idea that I take seriously, and it's not just based on, on good theology or good philosophy or a really good self-help book that I read. It, this comes from a life of experience, you know? And also living in a, in a truth where there's sometimes you are in a point where you have to have people in your lives that you don't always agree with, that sometimes those people end up becoming necessities in your world, and you have to learn to live with those folks. You know, and I believe this is why Paul said in Galatians um, 5, you know, beware of biting and devouring one another. If you're constantly nitpicking one another, you will be destroyed by one another. Beware of this. Or um, it, it's funny here in Colossians, I put this verse up on, on Twitter and on Instagram and stuff with the wink lady because I think it's funny. Um, but in, in, in Colossians 3, 12, it says, as God chose ones holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. The Bible talks a lot about patience. And it doesn't talk about patience just because it's like, oh, it's easy to love people. It talks about patience because that's the one thing you're going to need in your arsenal to love other people and to embrace contradiction is patience. Bear one another's which is like help each other with our problems. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. 
Above all else, close yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in to be in one body and be thankful. Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. So if this idea of us literally being one body in the Bible, Paul talks about, Jesus talks about, everybody talking, we don't seem to be concerned with that much in the church anymore. At least those of us who are busy texting and emailing, and, or not emailing, but tweeting and Facebooking and Instagramming and face, you know, all these things every day and writing books and saying things loud. We don't seem to be interested in creating one body, or if we do, we want to have one body that agrees with us and not a body that's diverse, not a body that has conflict or contradiction in it. But if we all live within contradictions, if contradictions is a part of human nature, then contradictions is part of the body. And it seems like part of our work would be going like, how do we have hard conversations? How do we confront one another with hard issues where we can still be of one body and still grow together and not scapegoat each other or write each other off? Also, how do we own our own bullshit as well? How do we admit that we're contradictory? So like if I go out and say, well, like, all these people are crazy, you know, um, because they don't agree with each other. I know what I'm doing. I all of a sudden made an enemy of that group. I'm all of a sudden doing exactly what I've said this group shouldn't do, I'm doing. I see the madness in that. And so the hope is, is not to have to continue that type of madness, but to communicate things in such a way that people go, this is how we communicate. Maybe I don't sum everybody up. Maybe I don't say all people are this or all this is bad, you know? Um, I'm always able to jump into little things like these blanket statements every now and then because I've had such a weird life that I've always seen the exception to the rule, you know? Like, yes, I have people who I love who voted for Donald Trump and I look up to and then I have friendships with. I do. I mean, I wish I could tell you I didn't. That would be a lie and I would be telling you that just to make you happy, you know? Um, like I talked about last week, the Johnny Rotten article. You know, here he is, guy is doing everything he can to take his wife, take care of his wife with Alzheimer's, took in his grandkids when his, their daughter couldn't be there for him, and now she's passed away, but was the father to those kids, you know, does all these amazing things, cares for people, has lived life and lived it pretty well on his own terms, but yet his politics is supposed to, me to have me write him off and not get any of the wisdom. He, he, it's so funny, he talks about people like in his bands that he's had fallings out with. And, and how, like, they hate him now or they're suing him and stuff. And he's like, but you know what? That stuff, the suing, the arguments, that's not what's important. And he'll hold up his album and say, what's important is, is the work that we did here. What we did here is the art that we made together. This is the beauty. This was the purpose that we had. He knows the purpose in his life is bigger than the conflicts that we have with one another. He knows that the purpose is bigger than the arguments that are happening now, even because something beautiful took place in the past, you know? It's like having kids and being divorced. You know, you, 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 there are times where you just have to remember those beautiful moments that you had together and those times that you had together or you just try because you're great. You're raising two beautiful children. You know what? And you may have differences and differences that split you apart, but you still have to find common ground with those children. You know, you still have to agree to disagree or agree here and make a, an exception here or do these things because you have these two people that are so important, something that's bigger than you, something's greater than you, bringing you together. So I guess my question today is, do you think life is bigger than you? Do you think community is bigger than you? Do you think the church is bigger than you? Then can we be co-parents? in the body. Can we figure out a way to do this? And can you be the change that you want to see in the world? But in order to do that, you have to be able to communicate with those that are keeping that change from happening. And you have to figure out what's the most creative way of doing that is. And that's up to you. I'm not going to hear to tell you what it is. For me, it's arguing well. It's having tough conversations. You know, it's also taking care of myself after those tough conversations and relaxing and, and getting away and, and having people I can vent with and talk to as well. You know, I'm not, I'm not like pure like, oh, that was wonderful. 
I'm so glad we had this really tough conversation. Now I'm just going to go home and enjoy and, you know, no, I'm going to call somebody and be like, oh my God, I won't believe the conversation I just had. You know, I'm a human being. We're all human beings going through this experience together. Um, so yeah, why is revolution here is because I want people to live well. I want people to think critically. I want people to ask tough questions and I want you to grow. I want you to live in grace. I, 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 I want you to be able to get to the place where you just, you're able to say like, yeah, I don't agree with that, but I agree with this or this and, and it's complex. And I mean, I do have some people I disagree with. So I have such intense disagreements that we don't talk anymore. Um, and that might change. I don't know, but, but there even, but sometimes there's even grace within that. Sometimes there's even grace within saying, I'm just going to love from afar because I don't have the ability to do it right now. So I'm not saying you have to do everything overnight and that Rome was built in a day. You know, I'm saying is this takes time and you have to put in hard work. You know, there's not, I can't tell you one book to read that's going to change your life. I used to ask Pete, yo, do an introduction to pyrotheology. You know, I just want something that I can just read. I think people like it. They can read it and they get it. And Pete said, you, it's not how it works. You have, to, you have to put in the work. You have to do the work to get where you're at, you know. And I have to say, yeah, surviving two divorces, watching my dad go to prison, losing my mother to cancer, um, watching family members who felt like family members turn on my family, watching preachers preach against my dad who, you know, a few months before were sitting on the couch with him or sitting in our living room having dinner, and now they're saying he's a cancer in the body of Christ. You know what I mean? It's like watching stuff like that changed me to be another person, but it didn't make me better. That for a time, it maybe made me bitter and angry, but now it's given me grace for some of those people. And, uh, and sometimes I'm able to go by, by the grace of God, I'm not them. You know? So people say, why do you stick around in this religious world and this Jesus thing and this Paul thing and the God thing and the Bible thing? It's because I really believe the whole love your neighbor as yourself. I really do believe loving your enemies makes a better world. Um, I don't think it's easy. Um, but I also don't think it's asking people to do the impossible. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I really do believe that. I am, I am very, uh, one of my, my sponsors in AA used to say I was haphazardly human. That's not the biggest compliment in the world. And if, if you know me, I, I'm not the most organized human being. In the, if I was to turn this camera on, you'd see a very messy house. Um, but I keep this one corner really nice for you. <laughs> um, the viewers, for viewers like you. Um, but if I can do it, I think you can do it too. So I'm not saying... <clears throat> I'm not asking you to do something that I don't think is possible. I'm asking you to do something that I think is very much possible. But I can tell you what, bitterness and hate and anger will destroy it. And they will eventually destroy you. You can build a whole community about what you're against. But one day that community will turn on you because you are a human being and you will fall into that category. That's why we see like legalistic preachers have these huge falls because they create this no grace zone. But then one day they fall into it. And when they fall, there's no grace for them, you know? And then sometimes they come back and they do something else. But, you know, like I was thinking about Mark, Mark Driscoll. You know, he was here in Seattle and he had that big Mars Hill church and did all this stuff. And, and, and then, you know, he had his scandal and he wasn't a very nice human being. And his theology wasn't very nice either. And, and, uh, he lost everything. Now, he's still pastoring. He has a pastor. I think, I think he has a church in Arizona is the last thing I heard. I don't know, to be honest with you. And he's still doing his thing, and everybody's like, see, he just moved on. But not really. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't stay where he was. He had to go somewhere else and do something new and create new friends and find new people to be around, um, and maybe justifiably so. But the point is, is like, we don't practice grace and restoration and those things in a way that's really biblical. You know, go to a new town and change your face. Be somebody else. Change your identity and, and, and then maybe you'll be okay. This is not how I think grace is supposed to work. Um, I, 
I see somebody uh, talking about mental health right now, and I can't see everything because I'm on my phone. Um, but that's something that I carry with me as well. You know, I, I've had electric shock therapy. Um, and this is really tough when you suffer from mental health issues. Um, but that's something that I carry with me everywhere I go. And um, I'd say up until about two years ago, I had a panic attack every day. Sometimes I'd have to have people pull, pull the car over so I could get out and have a drink of water or, or just walk down the side of the street because I was so terrified. And um, and I, I'm just grateful to be where I'm at. I'm grateful to have this gift of loving others and this, this struggle even at this point, and I never thought it would, but it has taken me 40 some odd years to get there. Um, so once again, I'm not asking anybody to become a saint. I'm just saying, can, maybe we can work on these things and think about these things and love others. Um, I mean, ultimately my goal is to be a good parent. So, I mean, there's always a chance I could just get on here and say, hey everybody, guess what? I just decided to just screw off because I can't be a good parent and do this. And that could happen one day. I, I, I hope it doesn't, but it could. Um, and I guess that's important too, is knowing what our goals are, knowing what our work is and what we're here to do and uh, being comfortable in that purpose. But anyway, I'm, I'm gonna go into weird wadness. I'm gonna try to read some comments really quick. And uh, Caleb's not here to read them for me, so I'm gonna have to try to look at these through my phone, but um, we'll take a quick look. Some of you guys are having great conversations with each other, so it's like always weird for me to like try to jump into those, so I'll try not to be too weird about that. All right, well, I'm not doing great because I'm not, my, I need my glasses. So I'll end with this. I'm gonna go back to Galatians because that's the good book. I like Galatians so much, I might read some more of the Bible one day. Um, but I, I'll end with this. The story of Peter and, and, and Paul. And Peter is, 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 grasping the, great, the ideas of grace and has affirmed Paul's call to reach Gentiles, everybody outside of Judaism, which before Christianity was only within Judaism. And it took Paul saying, I think that this faith is bigger than Judaism. I believe it belongs to the world. And so I believe people from all different races and different systems deserve grace. And they said, we agree with you. We agree. We want you to do this. But also, we want you to take care of the poor, which I think is really great that that was said. Because um, I think sometimes in this country, we forget that the poor, we don't see the poor always as a community. We separate them into different people. And, um, but there's a lot of poor people. Anyway, so, so Paul does, Paul says, great, thank you, I'm going to go do my thing. Uh, but then one day, Peter, Paul shows up to eat with Peter and all these guys, but recognizes that Peter all of a sudden is not eating with Gentiles anymore. Um, because he's afraid of what James's people, Jesus' brother, will think, because obviously James doesn't seem very comfortable with the idea of these Gentiles being Christians and not being circumcised, and they seem to have too many gods and all this stuff, and, you know, are they really Christians? I don't know about these guys. And so Peter gets really uncomfortable and decides not to eat with the Gentiles. And so then Paul's right-hand man, Barnabas, sees Peter doing this and first thought is, you know what, if Peter's doing this because he's kind of the man, maybe I should just eat with Jews too because I don't want this to reflect me bad and Peter might know something I don't know. So Barnabas goes over and sits with Peter and says, all right, we'll just sit on this side of the cafeteria. If you want to talk about segregation, I remember in high school, segregation seemed to be very alive and well in the, in the cafeteria at high school. Um, so Peter... And, and Barnabas and all these other guys are doing the same. And what happens is, is Paul comes down and has to say, guys, you can't do this. You can't just be like, this is the good group and that's the bad group. If you do this, it's going to throw everything away. And that's why Paul eventually later in that same book says, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, slave nor free, none of it. He, he says, you can't scapegoat each other this way. You can't hold these type of prejudices, you know? Now, does he cancel Paul 
does Paul cancel Peter and Barnabas? No, he continues to work with them, but he has a tough conversation with them because he knows how important these things are in order for the community to grow and to be what it's supposed to be and that these type of things are not productive in this world. The us and thems will never work and uh, that we're going to have to sit at the same table eventually and have the tough conversations and uh, be uncomfortable when the Jameses of this world walk in and go, mm, what's he doing there? Oh, I can't believe you just posted that. Oh, you hang out with them? Oh, you know what they think, don't you? Yeah. But what does that matter? You know, we don't agree on that. Is, do I have to agree with everybody I sit at the table with? So that's my, my challenge for you to think about today. I love you guys. I appreciate you here. Uh, if you want something that makes sense next week, we're going to have one of our first talks to do that is Peter Rollins. Peter Rollins, actually, he's not going to make sense at all. He's going to leave you more confused and devastated than even this talk. But yes, next week, Peter Rollins. I'm really excited to have Pete here. Uh, we're going to be talking about Wake, which is coming up in a few weeks, which I hope you guys will attend because Pete's doing this online thing, Wake. She's been doing it in Belfast for years, and it's literally the highlight of my year. So I hope you guys will check that out. I know he put a link to it somewhere down on the Facebook way, and we'll put a link to it for you folks who are listening on the podcast as well. Um, so I'm really excited to have Pete as a guest. We haven't had him in years, so I think it should be really great. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed on that one. But I love you guys. Hey, also, if you like what we're doing, you feel challenged by it, you, this is your body, you, you, you like being a part of this church, and, and you think we're doing good work, you know, if you could hit the donation button or go to revolutionchurch.com, and make a donation. That's how we survive. This is how this work continues. This is how I'm able to sit around and read hoity-toity books all the time is because of you guys and be a great dad at the same time. I couldn't do it without this community and you make it possible and I'm grateful for that. So if you like what we're doing, um, my financial guy says I have to do this every now and then. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I definitely do, did not get into this to get rich. Um, but being, being a good dad is, is a good, word, good reason enough for me to do this. Uh, and other things if I have to but I'm lucky enough to be here doing this with you guys I love you a lot see you next week thanks a lot folks bye bye for today Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. To make your 100% tax-deductible donation today, please visit revolutionchurch.com donate. You can also learn more by clicking the donate section on the website. 